वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पाठशाला पेपर एलेवन जैपी सिस्टी एंड सोसाइटी आई एम शमशाद खान विजिटिंग फैकल्टी दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस रिलीजन इन तोकुगावा जापान एज यू आर अवेयर रिलीजन इज एन इंटरेगिंग सब्जेक्ट ऑफ स्टडी इट अपीयर्स टू कॉमन मैन एंड द एलिट अलाइक इन द केस ऑफ जापान one instinctively notes that the presence of buddhism shintoism christianity confucianism new confucianism and a variety of native popular religion that flourished over time an understanding of the nature of religious fervor that thrived in the tokugawa period is crucial to our understanding of the present generation as well japan has long been labeled a borrower in the case of religion too it is no different by the 17th century borrowing assimilation and adaptation had occurred in the nation between various religions around the 14th century a more settled lifestyle came to be adopted by the common population by the 17th century it came to be recognized as a characteristic feature of the japanese society the changes in the japanese society structure and attitudes towards social mobility and functioning shaped the way religious took shape and were reinforced by them as well The religious fervor of Tokugawa era must be divided into the scholarly camp and the common people. While intense debates ensued among the scholarly classes on the tenets and codes of varying schools of thought, the common people sought to identify and adopt such practices that could ease their daily lives. and offer salvation from the harsh realities of the mundane world the common strain found in all religions was the increasing association with this worldly matter even the metaphysical came to acquire a practical element that was to facilitate the daily lives of the masses the distancing of the self from the other world did not imply a decline in the religiosity per se as the spread of shinto and buddhism to the masses occurred during this period many schools of thought emerged with the rise of new confucianism in contention with the stronghold of the buddhist monasteries now let's focus new confucianism and buddhism in japan the early 17th century japan is characterized by a denial of the fundamental compatibility of confucianism and buddhism which until then had been commonly accepted fujiwara seika and various other kyoto intellectuals contributed to the rise on spread of neo confucianism their central preoccupation being the chinese culture it was reflected in the heavily biased literature that predominantly included chinese literature and classics neo confucians like yamazaki ansai formulated a new system of shinto doctrine and equated the two key virtues reverences and righteousness to shinto terms prayer and honesty and forthrightness he is also credited with putting forth the idea of japan as the middle kingdom another neo confucianist scholar 
Asami Kesai emphasized loyalty, firm and unwavering, as the basis of the relationship between lord and retainer. Similarly, Sato Naokata rejected the excessive absorption in Shinto. He broke off ties with his master Ansai and peer Keisai due to these arguments. Around the same time, the Mito school established by Zhu Sun Shui under the patronage of Mitsukuni gained ground through its cardinal doctrine of patriotism and loyalty to the throne. In all this, we note that indeed the spread of ideas is made possible through the writings and commentaries of great intellectuals and their disciples. Alongside these scholars, others presented fundamentalist and revisionist tendencies seeking to revert to the original Confucianism that was untouched by the alien concepts of transcendentalism that seemed to have crept in via the contact with Buddhist Shinto traditions. They simplified and reduced the teaching of, to its bare essentials while adapting to the culture and tenets of that time. Let's focus towards Christianity in Japan. The case of the spread of Christianity is important as a means of understanding how the hold of daimyo over the people in their domains could even influence such private decisions as the religion they followed. The initial support they received from the daimyos who converted and then forced their followers to accept the religion. Plus, the enthusiastic support of Nobunaga who sought to undermine the Buddhists greatly facilitated the missionary's task. He also associated them in building chapels in Kyoto and Azuchi. Hideyoshi too initially continued along this path but suddenly took a U-turn in 1587, ordering the Christian missionaries to leave the country in 21 days, probably due to this concern about the Portuguese slave trade of young Japanese boys and girls and their custom of meat eating. However, he still did not rigorously enforce his decree and welcomed the Franciscans who came from the Philippines. The consequent rivalry between the Jesuits and Franciscans resulted in the elites being drawn in by former while the poorer masses chose the latter. The 1956 Spanish shipwreck incident triggered the first execution of Christian missionaries in Japan. Iyasu, interested in expanding trade and commerce, opened all ports and continued a policy of toleration. However, he was soon convinced of the potential political menace that it could be and in 1614 issued an edict banning the religion. The subsequent persecution of the Christians that took place in the Tokugawa period is alarming. The people were required to become members of at least one major Buddhist sect. Also, the Daimyo suspected of hiding Christian sentiments and to prove their loyalty by purging their domain of Christians. The Shimabara rebellion of 1637-38 considered the climax of the anti-Christian campaign 
was evidence of the outward denouncement of Christianity by the people who continued to be Christians at heart. This led to further severe restrictions on contact with the outside world, a process that had begun around 1616 when only Nagasaki and Hirado ports were entry points to foreign merchants. Now let's look at religion, polity and economy and how it impacted the society as a whole. Political rationalization is closely linked to religion in Japanese history. While the progress of Buddhism with increasing emphasis in ritual and magic did not favor political nationalization, Confucianism continued to influence it. The development of Bushido, the ethics of the warrior class, too can be traced to the propagation of the Confucian teaching on the virtue of loyalty. It could indeed be called the religion of loyalty that could override other religious considerations. The devotion to the Lord grew from a sense of gratitude. Filial piety too was meant to reinforce this primacy given to loyalty for the retraining of the child in filial piety is so that he may fulfill loyalty as an adult. The Kokugaga school and Mito school were ardent advocates of the new emphasis on the emperor, that is Sonno, and the national body, that is Koktai. For the former, the starting point was the revival of interest in history, literature and religion in the 17th century. The scholarly work of K and Kada Azumaru laid the groundwork for further study and was an important step aimed at the revival of ancient Japanese culture and institutions. It espoused an extreme rejection of China, Buddhism and Confucianism and turned to Shinto, the native religion thus summarily denying all metaphysics as foreign importations. Revelation not reason who enabled one of one to understand this world seen as millennial religious movement, its religious goal was the restoration of the emperor to actual sovereignty and purging of Japan of all corrupt influences. The Mito school was founded by Tokugawa Mitsukuni under whose guidance work on Dai Nihon Chi was started. It clearly proved the previous existence of proper rule by the emperor and thus undermined the legitimacy of the shogunate. It however did not completely reject China for even this loyalist and nationalist work was written in Chinese. Unlike the Kokugansha who wrote in pure Japanese. While maintaining that Japan was superior to all, they had the highest regard for the Chinese sages and taught Chinese morality but not Buddhism, which they too rejected. Tokugawa Miraki's statement revered the way of the land of gods and used the teaching of China is an apt description of the guiding principle of this school. The link between polity and economy is noted in Confucian theory of the state which establishes the aim of economy policy and achieving political stability. 
Nonetheless, moral exhortation remained an important part of government policy and reform. The use of Confucian concept by the Bakufu to justify their rule in terms of heaven earth ruler subject relationship, the Chu his philosophy, which eventually became the official philosophy of the regime, spoke of knowing one's proper place in society. Proof that this was imbibed by even the common people can be seen in the peasant protest that demanded proper treatment by the overlords and not an overthrow of the established order. The economic ethic of the merchant class too came to be justified under the Jodo Shinsu and the Shingaku movement. The former put forward a doctrine of profiting both self and others, while the latter espoused the knowing of one's occupation and its diligent practice. Again, this is an example of focus on maintaining a status quo of respect and honor without necessarily questioning the very foundation of the established social structure. However, gradual attempts were continuously being made to improve one's station in life, more so when these below felt increasingly betrayed by masters who no longer look to these needs as per tradition. Now let's discuss about the religion in rural areas. The rural population had a strong belief in the Buddhas and the powers of God. Rituals, prayer and ceremonies were held to enlist their aid and festivals were meant as a display of the people's gratitude. Government authorities too shared these beliefs and thus allowed the festivities to go on. However, if the religious fervor crossed, it could be banned as it is increasingly became a threat to the calm and peace of the, the rural society. The authorities saw in these marginal expressions and potential to subvert political order. Despite the government officials and the peasant leaders, efforts to sporadically exhort the villagers to simplify the ceremonies of the festival, they tended to become more elaborate. In conclusion, we reflect their religion need not be defined by purely otherworldly notions that are exclusive of this worldly benefits that the followers seek. Be it in a scholarly debate or in the local adaptation and in genuity, the consistent efforts at chasing the meaning of life and giving it a purpose while functioning within the constraints and restrictions imposed by authorities is evidence of the delicate balance of acceptance of their status in life and a humble but enthusiastic pursuit of newer avenues of knowledge and experience. The rise of New Confucianism and Buddhism in Japan was not simply a spillover effect from China. Just as in the country of origin, the philosophy underwent changes and displayed a rich intellectual variety. So did it unfold in Japan with its own indigenous flavor owing to a different milieu. The reality that access to an original doctrine or narrative of the flow of events is made difficult by the tradition of the disciples writing and continuing the legacy forces 
as to revisit our understanding of claims of the start of a philosophy of founding of a school of thought. The way a philosophy develops in relation to its rival is crucial as it determines the doctrine and the language. As it attempts to break free of a critic-based study to an independent and inherently superior philosophy, remnants of the origin linger beyond attempts by revisionists to purge it of permanent linkages that were unwittingly formed by the early philosophers. The role of New Confucianism and Confucian theory of politics and economy in legitimizing and supporting the Bakufu's obsession with maintenance of stability and healthy financial resources must be reiterated. Simultaneously, the feeling of constant threat from any religion with fervent following outside the direct control of the Bakufu goes to show the real power of religion in channelizing the power of masses. With that, we come to the conclusion of this module. Thank you.